Welcome back to EPRV TV viewers. Chris Nichols here with a short video. There's an ongoing debate right now between the effectiveness of Panasonic's DFD autofocusing and Canon's dual pixel AF system. And so Jordan and I thought, well, we're curious about this debate. Let's kind of throw our two cents in and we just did a little quick test. We had some time. Now, what we wanted to test was the Canon SL3, which is one of their latest systems using dual pixel AF. Plus we had one for a review. And then we also want to test the Panasonic GX9 because, well, that's what was available to us. So what we did is we got two lenses, very similar focal lengths, very similar light gathering capabilities. We set the aperture so we get very similar depth of field for our autofocusing test as well to keep it fair. I also want to very simplistically just explain some of the nuances between the two cameras autofocusing systems. So the SL3 is a good example because it's an SLR which classically uses a phase detect AF system. Basically there's a separate sensor that reads multiple rays of light through the lens, sees how far apart they're focusing on the sensors, and then determines where the focusing has to be. Now what the SL3 does that's unique and many other Canon cameras do is a dual pixel AF where they do the same phase detect system but right on the sensor where it's more accurate. Now Panasonic's use a contrast detect autofocusing system. They basically look at the image right on the sensor itself and as they shift the lens back and forth they can see where subjects become more or less contrasty. Now when a subject is at its most contrasty that means it's in focus. It's a very accurate system but because the lens has to move back and forth a lot to see these differences it's traditionally quite slow. So what modern Panasonic's use is their DFD system. This stands for depth from defocus. But very simplistically, the camera looks at the areas that are not only contrasted and in focus, but also the areas that are out of focus. And it can judge those distance differences, shifting the lens very quickly right to where the area should be most contrasty, and then fine tuning from there. It's a very effective and much faster system than a classic contrast detect autofocusing system. Now what we thought we would do is use our own novel little obstacle course test because I know that when I look at Jordan I see 70s cop detective bar none I'm sure you all feel the same way so we set up a little 70s detective kind of obstacle urban course cue the waka chaka waka chaka music yeah yeah go for it Now we tested three autofocusing modes multiple times here and I want to talk about face detect first. The Panasonic GX9 did not pick up Jordan's face until he passed his own truck. So it didn't work at long distances, but once it got up close, it did a very good job. The Canon SL3 did a similar job, but it picked up Jordan's face from much farther away. So I was impressed by that. The second autofocusing mode we tested was continuous autofocus with a single central point. This has two issues. First off, for the user, you have to keep that single point on your subject the whole time. The second problem, both these cameras did not do a great job, but equally so. Uh, they were always consistently behind Jordan's face, so more focused on his chest or his shoulder. So I don't recommend this mode for either camera. So the final autofocusing method that we tested for stills was the tracking autofocus. I find Jordan on the screen, I touch him on the screen there, it locks onto his subject. And uh, first off, the Panasonic GX9, this was the most consistently successful method. It tracked from a long distance, I felt confident that it was following the subject pretty well, and as long as I was accurate about where I did actually lock that point on, it did probably the best job. Now the Canon SL3 in tracking mode, actually very similar performance. I had a hard time telling the difference. Again, touch on my subject, locked it in place. As long as I accurately chose my subject, it did a pretty decent job tracking. I guess the only thing is the Canon does give me good choices, whether I want to use face detect or tracking. Whereas with the Panasonic, I felt tracking was really the most reliable option. Now we also did some video tests and here you can see the two together. We have Jordan running from a long distance as well as a closer shot where he's moving much slower. And honestly, the Panasonic just could not keep up. It really struggled, really lost focus and took a long time to reacquire it. Whereas the Canon, although it has some hiccups, really was very smooth, very quick, and tracked him quite beautifully. I think this is where Canon gets such a good reputation as an all-around focusing system. It's not that the dual pixel AF does a great job for stills. It doesn't, frankly, but with video, it's very consistent and very smooth and easy to use. And therefore, it's a much better all-around autofocusing choice. Now from a usability aspect, the actual ergonomics of setting up focus will vary from camera to camera, but one thing that's consistent that you can see here, contrast detect focusing systems have that wobble. They're constantly going in and out, and that really does throw off the user experience. As you can see with the Canon's dual pixel phase detection AF, it's very smooth and it's confidence inspiring. 
All right, so in these particular tests with these two cameras, I guess I would say that the Canon's gonna win. It does do better video autofocus by a large margin. And when it came to stills, I do feel like I got a slightly higher success rate, and it was definitely more confident, inspiring when I was using the camera. However, I do think that Panasonic's DFD system gets a bad rap. It's actually a very successful system, and I think what throws people off is the user experience of the wobble and things like that. I decided to test the GH5 as well, because of course we have them available, and it is a more powerful Powerful processing camera and actually what I found was a much higher hit rate a much more confidence inspiring uh, experience and so there is something to be said for that Canon's dual pixel AF was always great even when it first came out but I don't feel it's changed very much over the years and Panasonic's autofocusing has gotten better and better so I hope that both companies will continue to improve their focusing into the future I do want to say another thing here and that is we are not talking about hybrid phase detect contrast detect autofocusing system hybrid Hybrid autofocusing, I still think is the golden ticket, but let's see if Canon and Panasonic can catch up. Anyways, I hope you found this useful. Please remember that this is going to be very dependent on what camera you use, what lens combination you use, what conditions you're shooting in, but hopefully you found this helpful. Again, leave comments below. Let us know what you think on Twitter and Instagram. Hope that you enjoy these nice little short videos. Thanks so much for joining us today.